so welcome in Link uh, 2019. Uh, Brian and I will try to summarize the content of the Strikers Symposium. First of all, Brian, the Atlas Tent. It was introduced in Europe uh, since uh, uh, 2015 with a great success. What about US? You just started one year ago. Can you please share with us uh, your experience and what did you think about, what is your opinion about this device? Mm. We've only had this device for a year in the US, but it has completely changed the way I think about treating aneurysms, both from an open standpoint and an endovascular standpoint. I think they should have completely renamed it because it is a dramatic evolution of the original Neuroform stent. Mm -hmm. I think they designed it to simply be the easiest stent to deploy on the market. I think they succeeded. I know that when I want to treat a wide neck aneurysm and I'm going to use a stent to reconstruct that neck, I want the simplest and easiest to use device that exists. And I really think that they hit the target mm. with Atlas. You had a comment during the symposium about the, um, the accuracy of the deployment and the landing zone. You, you, you said a word about that. I did. For me, I've always believed in laser cut night and all stents mm -hmm. because they are the easiest stent to deploy with the most accuracy because they almost eliminate foreshortening. When you look at some of the braided micro stents, mm -hmm. they can foreshorten up to 40%, mm -hmm. and that dramatically changes the way you think about placement. You have no idea where the proximal end of that stent is going to land. I love the idea that I know, not only distally, but also proximally, where that stent's going to be so I can avoid perforators, I can avoid bifurcations, mm -hmm. I can avoid junctions. And so that just gives me an extra level of comfort mm -hmm. if I want supreme accuracy in placement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is also no tip in that kind of stand. That did, you, did you find this as an, uh, an advantage or an inconvenience? Initially designed it with a 15 millimeter lead wire. They've, they've subsequently found that we don't need it. There's no need for, the sta yeah. for the stability mm. that that wire theoretically would, would, would provide because it has excellent radial force. And as soon as those tips flower and touch the vessel wall, it's anchored in place. Mm. And you can be assured that it's not gonna slide either proximally or distally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. I think in Europe as well, it, it is the, the first choice for the physician now for the last years. It has to be confirmed by the doctor. That's interesting to hear because we have, we have far fewer options in the U.S. And to hear that validated when you, where you have many more stent options, I think really is a, a testament to the function of this stent. Mm. Another point is the content in metal. The content, the, the metallic surface of this stent is very low. What do you, what do you think about that? Well, I think that they've, they've shrunken the structural elements by about 50%, so it has minimal protrusion into the vessel lumen. I, I think that's a very important. When I put a stent up, unless I'm going to float avert, I want nothing left behind. And I think that this gives you the least amount of metal left behind. What is good for the safety also of the procedure, probably? I think so. Mm. I, I really mm. do think so. And if, mm. and if we're talking about using it off-label, let's say for ruptured aneurysms, this is going to be my go-to stand yeah. because if there I, is one to select. You will choose the less with less metal. I agree. Mm. I agree. Now, conversely, mm. if you want to transition to flow diversion, mm. I want to use the, st the stent that has the highest number of braids because I do believe that may relate to higher occlusion rates. And but, th but this is a mistake. Well, I think. And this is a good transition with the evolved stand because the evolved stand is the next generation after yeah. the, the streamline with less wire. He has less wire and the flow diversion effect is exactly the same. Just changing the braining angle, you, are, you keep the same porosity. Even better when you do um, uh, the peak velocity simulation. So just with less wire, just changing the braining angle, you, get, uh, you, you have the same level of uh, flow diversion effect. You know, this is a common misconception. I, I must admit that even I succumb to this often. Mm. How about we go to Timo to talk a little bit more about using Surpass Evolve uh, in his Toronto experience. Hello, the Canadian experience with uh, the Surpass Evolve is up to now excellent. We have treated 10 patients, uh, today actually will be the 10th patient, uh, and uh, up to now we are very positive. Uh, the Surpass Evolve uh, is able to incorporate all the benefits of uh, previous uh, flow diverters without the downsides. Uh, so we have very good pushability. Uh, the distal landing zone stays very stable. Uh, we have excellent opening. The device uh, has not yet twisted, neither on the flow models nor on uh, the patients that uh, were treated. In fact, uh, in one uh, case where the device started to twist just simply by pushing the device, we were able to untwist it. So 
Up to now we are extremely happy uh, with uh, the outcomes of the patients. Uh, in fact, we are preparing our first publication and our first uh, experience uh, with this device. Vincent, we don't have the luxury of having Evolve in the U.S. I'd love to hear your take on the first cases that you've done. Oh yes, it's a very preliminary experience and what we tried to, we tried to highlight in the symposium was the main differences between the first generation of Surpass flow diverter stand and the new one, the Evolve stand. It's amazing to see that the concept and, uh, has totally changed. It's like a technology disruption for, the, for this flow diverter. It changed to uh, an over-wire delivery method to uh, uh, an empty catheter technique. So this offers very nice trackability. You don't need to struggle uh, with a five French catheter uh, or a four French catheter into the distal ACA. You just can put just a single O27 micro catheter in the ACA or the MC and then to load the stand very easily in this sheet. So this is the first massive evolution, the trackability for sure. The second uh, main evolution is also um, the ease of use and uh, the good apposition of the implant. Why? Because they have decreased the number of wire. They have decreased the number of wire and they have also changed the braiding angle. That is a major point because when you change the braiding angle, you offer the implant more apposition, uh, more flexibility, and this is a key point for flow diverter effect. Uh, that is uh, one of the most crucial improvements they did on this device. I would say also that they took some thinner wire that makes the implant very smooth. I would say a little bit in between the silk and the pipeline from a mechanical point of view when you use it in the silicone bench test. And the first results we have in patients that are, the, we are at the very beginning because it were pulling all together the new case performed in Europe and in Canada. Uh, today it's about 60, 70 cases, but the first data we have about the ease of use and the immediate safety are very good. Uh, so we are expecting now the, the follow-up for this stand, but it looks really promising to my mind. When I was watching your cases, I was impressed by, for lack of a better term, the radial force that the stent used. It looked less lazy than some of the other flow diverters on the market. It didn't look like you n needed to fluff or manipulate the device yeah, as much. Yeah. Is that true? You, you're totally right. There is two two phenomenon for this. First is the optimal sizing. Extra maneuver, push and fluff is a, our maneuver to compensate a bad sizing. If you have the good sizing, the, you are close from the, nimal, the, nom, the nominal side, you will have no major problem to open the stand and just pushing the implants will result in a nice or distal opening of the stand most of the case. So the optimal sizing is one point and the second point is also the radial force of the implant as we were just discussing. Changing the brightening angle will result in a massive pop-up of the stand, especially at the distal part they put some leaves to, uh, that, that are very short, you know, to, uh, to, um, to uh, stabilize the stand in the microcatheter. So when you push, you uh, release the, the, sh the leaves very quickly. So the, 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 the stent is bumping, bumping, bumping out uh, very easily. Any drawbacks to Evolve compared to Surpass Streamer? Um, comp I, I don't see any drawback. I see only advantage. You just have to be too careful when you put the stent into the, the hub that the sheet is covering the marker. The, the marker into sheet. So you don't have to push all the pusher into the sheet blindly because the marker is, in, is still covered by the sheet. If you do that, you can push uh, the stent uh, forward. So that's the only thing we need to take care. It's not a drawback, it's just a difference that you need to be aware. And, um, you need to f and the flush is a little bit uh, strong to perform, so that's why we advised during the symposium to take a hub, to put the Evolve at the mid part of the hub, and to, with a syringe to infuse saline under pressure, so you have a very nice flashback uh, into the sheet of the, the Evolve. Okay. Vincent, when I do my first case in the US, will you promise to be there? I will be there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and see you next year.